2656 Have you been missing your fix For Mike's Daily Podcast And he sings with these weird lyrics And he's saying things to you like I'm through with this show I'm done How did you know I'm done with it I'm done Because you guys never respond Mike's Daily Podcast You don't you don't. Nothing. You don't even go to the website. And there's ways to comment on the website because it's a WordPress Mike's website. Daily you don't even do that. Podcast. I'm just going to berate you. Yeah. This is what it is. This podcast this is just me berating you. Because I don't do a pod. Let's say, okay, I didn't do one on Friday because I went to Costco and... I went to the one in Fremont, which is the busiest Costco to begin with. And then you do it on a Friday at five. Forget about it. It is wow. And the last, every time I go, something weird happens. The last time I went about, and I, I only go like once every two months. So I've got the executive card. I spent the extra 50 bucks on it. And with the, with the, promise that I would spend enough that it would basically pay for itself but it doesn't really do that I don't go enough but what I did learn is well I don't know what happens I enter that zone and I like the Fremont one because they always have rotisserie chicken the Hayward one they have there have been times I've gone to the one in Hayward and they did this is the one I think they call it Union City Costco They've been out of rotisserie chickens. So has the San Leandro one. So I immediately block all of those. I don't go to those anymore. There is a Hayward Costco, but it's only for companies and businesses. And here's today's podcast picture. A business only one. Hey, I was over there in San Francisco yesterday. And I got that cool picture of the Bay Bridge and little tugboat thingy. And I had not been to the Embarcadero and walked around from the ferry building to Fisherman's Wharf in a long time. I got over 20,000 steps. Wow. I haven't done that in a long time. The late great Basil the Boxer. He only went to San Francisco once. Chrissy Fields. We went there and walked around there one time. I wish I, wish I had done it many times, but sadly that was just the one time. Lots of people have dogs walking along. Walking along there in the Embarcadero area. area. And if you have not been in a while, let me just tell you, if you go on a Saturday morning afternoon, there are a million of those little carts, usually someone... Ridiculous, random hosts. Not many Caucasians cooking. It's a lot of hot dogs they're cooking with the... The the Caucasians are buying this stuff. Because something about a Caucasian male when he smells any kind of hot dog and onion combination. News random. They will purchase that. They will stop and buy that. How much for that? And the price is never the same. They don't have any price. Mike scavenger hunt. On their cart thing. They don't have a sign with the prices. It changes from person to person. If the guy likes you, you get it for cheaper. If not, it's going to cost you 20 bucks for that hot dog, maybe. Wow, that's wow. The onions and the bell peppers. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the hot yeah. dogs and the, and the buns. And they're using... I noticed... I mean, there was a bunch. I would say in that walk, in that half-hour walk that I took... Or the 20,000 steps, whatever it was. Yo, the mic tip. Uh, there was, I, I must have passed at least 50 of these carts. Little carts. They're on wheels, so easy to transport. And they use, imagine the biggest cooking dish, a uh, cookie dish, a cookie dish, a baking sheet. That you had, the biggest one you can get for your oven. The Micropedia Insanica. And underneath it, they have some kind of heating element. It could be gas, like a Coleman type stove thing, 
Or I saw some electric ones And then they cook And they they sit there and sizzle And all you smell is onion and hot dog Sizzling away This is what's happening along the Embarcadero I don't remember it being like this And I haven't been probably in five years Oh, probably more than that Because I think it was before I met my lovely lady friend I used to go I tried to go there at least Three times a year Go down to the Embarcadero Walk around I remember one time going Getting off at the BART I always take BART in I never drive I got off at the Embarcadero I used to go a lot Because there was a coffee bean And tea leaf right there Next to that Hyatt The News Bleed Section By the That uh, Trolley uh, They don't call it trolleys It's a streetcar <laughs> Cable car I mean The cable car Where the cable cars start There near the ferry building Live and loco And you walk in And it's fascinating It's got this huge atrium and there are balconies above you, but they're all, it's built like a pyramid. So each balcony is slightly closer to the next one and it builds on top of you. It's a very bizarre perspective. I'm going to post a podcast picture of that. Although today's podcast picture is of the Bay Bridge. But if you look up in this Hyatt thing. It's a nightmare of a show. It's pretty interesting. And I love stopping in there. I used to love Stopping at the coffee bean and tea leaf And getting a black forest blended latte Which is probably horrible for me But they have since left the Bay Area They couldn't make it I guess they're still doing good in Southern California And various airports around the country I think Las Vegas They're there too But I love to stop in there And then I start walking Perusing Oh and the farmer's market was going on yesterday When I got there and by the time I left the Bay uh, Area getting, I mean, not the Bay, this, this, uh, San Francisco. By the time I left San Francisco getting on the BART there at the Embarcadero, a little after three, all those booths for the farmer's market were gone. Like not even a trace of any of them. And beforehand there were a bunch of them. But there are still a bunch of people cooking the hot dogs and the onions and that's all you smell along the Embarcadero. So that changed I don't remember that Before Maybe that's just a weekend thing I used to visit Mainly during the week That's something I maybe Have never witnessed Because of the timing And then Nothing else much has changed I am here to report It looks pretty much The way it did pre-COVID A lot of places closed up but then a lot of places have opened. Cowboy Creamery's gone from the ferry building. As we go outside a cafe anyway, where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valleyton, the last place on earth. Which is a very good thing. Which is a very, very good thing. Mike, it's Mikey Fikey. Great. I, I mean, Pier 39 has a couple new stores. It's, I, I don't think I saw many empty stores, just a couple, but. I guess that's my report. I went about as far as Museum Mechanique. Had to pop in there. What's the cliche of the week? 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 That you put a quarter in and they start to dance. Different situations like a shootout in the Old West or maybe they're dancing a, around on an... Uh, like a, some kind of shindig, different scenarios. What's the cliche of the week? 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 And it, it's very easy to just go, ah, I saw this. No, 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 no. Stop. Look around. It is going to be different if you actually get in there. Breathe the air. Mike's absolutely useless review. And that's what I learned yesterday. That in Costco, I always forget things. I forgot a receipt one time. And I don't think they let you out if you don't have the receipt. Don't they go down your receipt and check to make sure everything that was in your shopping cart is there? And there was somebody with a little dog on one of their carts. And I sent a picture to a friend of mine And he said What are they selling 
dogs at Costco They're probably big dogs Or maybe you get two for one At Costco's But you no know, it was just this dog I guess it was a service animal of some kind But yeah I, I it's, it's crazy One other time I went to that Costco I was trying to leave And my lovely lady friend's calling me And saying hey a dog got in the house I go what dog We don't have a dog No, it's just some dog A random dog Walked into the house He's terrorizing the cats I'm like, wait, what? Okay Always something bizarre It's a It's a weird Bizarre world In that Costco There's magic It's a magical Costco Hey, you know that there's a band Called Magic Magic exclamation point And they have that song Rude why you gotta be so rude It's a guy singing to the father of his girlfriend Telling the father Hey I want to marry your daughter And the father says no And he says Well I'm gonna marry her anyway That's this song And it's the only big hit Magic had Mike ripped someone A new one Even though it came out almost 10 years ago now Whenever I hear it I'm reminded of a wedding That I did Worst experience of my life Doing a wedding That's why I don't do them anymore But I was using a laptop That I basically So my Ex-wife took the laptop When we separated And she was friends with the people That were getting married And she said hey can you do this wedding And I said sure And she goes here you can use the laptop I go that'd be great So she gives me the laptop the day of the wedding And it seemed to be fine But you know she's one of these people Probably like you Probably like a majority of the people That never does updates And I didn't check to see if it had not If it had done any updates And just before the wedding It started to go through updates And I I was basically playing music Playing music And then these updates started And the music stopped Because I was playing it through the laptop Connected to an amp That was connected to some big speakers And suddenly there's no music And they're walking down the aisle to go to the To the altar there to get married Which was was outside So there's no altar It was just where the, the podium Where the preacher was And yeah So no music for them walking down Up to the podium Or her walking to the groom Who was at the podium You know You've been to a wedding before And so I had no music I couldn't do anything So I I was like Thanks a lot ex-wife What the heck did you do to this laptop And I did a lot I worked feverishly Thankfully it restarted And was able to work again Just as they were walking down the aisle After just getting married And they they wanted this one song played And I played that But that family never forgave me And I don't talk to them to this day (laughs) It's sad Because I was friends with them Through my ex-wife But then you know When the divorce happens You kind of lose Your connection to all these friends You once had Through the spouse That you had It's a sad fact About all that But That song Was requested by somebody At the wedding They wanted to hear that Even though it didn't pertain to this family Because the father was okay with the guy marrying the daughter I guess And they Somebody requested it And I didn't have access To the song I didn't have access to Wi-Fi I think finally somebody gave me the, uh, The people There was a house next door That somehow gave me access Late in the evening And I was able to play the song And everybody danced and went crazy And so that song still exists And wow that's fascinating What a story that was Mike tell me I'm listening to this today On the 13th of August Wow if you're doing that Then you're just listening Just as I posted it Did you know Today is a particular food That I do not eat anymore I probably will not eat The last time I think I had one of these Was on a plane to Germany in 2009 We got bumped up to first class Because our flight had gotten cancelled The day before So they bumped us up 
and they had filet mignon on the menu. And I go, wow, this is the first time I've ever had filet mignon on a plane. So today is National Filet Mignon Day. And that was probably the last time I ever will have it. I also heard that today is International Left Handers Day. Let's hear it for those of you who write with your left hand. I don't see how on earth you can do that. It looks really difficult. But generally, the people that I've met who are left-handed are pretty dang smart. And can figure out things like how to make a grill out of a cookie sheet. And then make a bunch of money off of stupid Caucasians that want to eat hot males. It's always meant women don't want to eat that. Very few women that I know are like into the onions and the hot dogs and things. That's just what I've discovered in my life. I could be wrong. But I could be right I could be wrong I could be right I could be singing a song by Public Image Limited Yes Did you know they have a new album? It was 45 years ago that John Linden Rearranged pop music for the second time With the introduction of innovative experimentalist Public Image Limited Oh my gosh The bottom of the charts Pretty good guy songs that never made it on the radio because people didn't think they were worth but you know what they come back up and people start playing on them and it's like oh, where'd that come from releasing records on their own pill official LTD label everybody make some noise ah, bringing to you live from podcaster Valley Mont Mike's Daily Podcast! But it says here today, Public Image Limited have released their vital 11th studio album, End of World. It's been released worldwide. Matthew's News. On Tuesday, August 15th, which has not happened yet as of this recording, a limited edition digital pressing of End of World will be released that unlocks access to exclusive videos, previously unheard versions of songs, scanned lyric sheets, illustrations, audio interviews, and more. For more information, da 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 da. It says go to the some public image limited website. But yeah, the other thing that if you did not know, if you're super young, cool to you that you are super young, enjoy it while you're young. But John Lennon used to be with Sid, Sid and Nancy. Well, new Sid and Nancy, but was with the six Sex Pistols. John Linden, after fronting the Sex Pistols, he formed Public Image Limited in 1978. That's how long they've been around. Outside of Pill, John has released several solo records and collaborations. He also brings quality TV to the masses, it says here. We can dispute that, but he has re- released two autobiographies, Rotten... Yes, because he was known as Johnny Rotten. Rotten, no Irish, no blacks, no dogs. What? In 1999, he released that. And in the book, Anger is an Energy, My Life Uncensored in 2014. He then released Mr. Rotten's songbook in 2017, which features never-before-seen artwork as well as annotated song lyric sheets spanning John's entire career all written in his own hand there you go so they they sent that to me i thought i'd pass that along to you and i'm always singing that dang song that pill did years ago pil so we heard from the late great basil the boxer a little bit earlier pet parents it says this uh email that i received said pet parents Survey says your dogs are listening when you talk to them and their comprehension is profound. One in three feel more emotionally understood by their dog than by their partner. Beyond the basic commands they learn in training, the average American dog knows 18 words. That's according to a new pre-ply study that analyzes how well we can communicate with our pets. Can we communicate with our pests? I'd probably. This came from Claire Martin Tellis. 
who works for NorthStarInbound.net. Let's see, what are the top 10 words? Respondents tell us their dogs know. <laughs> Number one, love. Aw, dogs know love. Number two, car. Because they know they're going to go for a walk or go somewhere cool. Number three, cookie. Number four, bye-bye. Number five, baby. Number six, grandma. That's interesting, grandma. Go say hi to grandma. Number seven, home. And number eight, ice cream. But actually, there were three that tied for number eight. Ice cream, TV, and happy. That's odd. Okay, well... We heard that little bit of interesting news. Oh, hey, I got a call this week. But they didn't leave a message. But somebody did call my phone number, 510-228-4640. You can always call that if you'd like to chime in about anything we covered. And we will play back your response on the segment, emails from email and your calm and not so calm ments. Okay, one more thing. That we'll get to And then we have A very cool segment That I'm going to bring to you Shortly But yes Amazon has rolled out Its virtual health clinic Amazon getting away From clothes You probably heard this week They're gonna Stop selling clothes I I don't see that happening But that's what they say They're gonna get away From the clothing side Of the business I guess Etsy and all the others Are giving them a run For their money But Amazon is rolling out its virtual health clinic service nationwide. Amazon Clinic is a virtual platform for users to connect with healthcare providers to treat common conditions like sinus infections, acne, and migraines. Let it be said, let it be known that the health industry is going so into the internet now. There is always going to be, oh my gosh, rush me to the emergency room for this, that, and the other thing. But with, with all these other things that, eh, I don't know if I want to ne- leave the house and if this is something I can treat myself, that's going to be done from home. Therapists, that's going to be done from home. I think I might have an allergy to something, that's going to be done from home. I think I might have poison oak. Does this look like poison oak to you? That's going to be done from home. Users can choose to connect with a clinician over video or text messages. Consumers pay around $30 to $40 per consultation. And this means, because that's such a low price, no insurance. Consumers can use insurance to help pay for medications prescribed through the service, though. Prescriptions can be filled by any pharmacy, including Amazon's own online pharmacy. Amazon has tried for years to crack the healthcare industry with mixed success. This is interesting. Wow, this is interesting. One medical, which combines in-person care with digital health and virtual care services. One medical. That makes it easier to schedule appointments, renew prescriptions, access up-to-date health records, and advance health outcomes. And that costs $200 a year. Burger master. Got that information from Rob Black. I produce his podcast, The Rob Black Show, Rob Black and Your Money. Covers all kinds of money stuff. Interesting trends like that. MTV News. You hear it. And Uber. First. Yes. The word is now everywhere. It's it's used in every country, it seems. Uber has reported uh, their first operating profit. We love you, Mike. <laughs> they reported results that missed analysts' expectations f- for revenue, but offered rosy guidance because they've got a net income of $394 million compared to a net loss of $2.6 billion. Hmm. So somehow in all of that It's Bison Bentley's Do you know that? Hey, this is Bison Bentley And Mike Matthews has a couple of stories That'll make you want to ask yourself Do you know that? Do you know that? In this past quarter The second quarter of the year They achieved their first quarter Where they have free cash flow Of over one billion dollars Apparently Their delivery service is up 12% From a year ago 
and their regular service where you, they come and pick you up, that's gone up 25%. First of all, I just want to just um, thank everyone for joining us here on this show. This is their great. Their active platform consumers reached about 137 million people using their service, and that's up 12% from a year ago. And guess how many trips were completed on the platform over the past year? 2.3 billion trips. Perhaps you used one recently. That is up 22% from a year ago. <laughs> we were talking about Taco Bell or Toxic Bell recently. They were hit with a proposed class action lawsuit claiming that they advertised its Mexican pizzas and crunch wraps as having more than double the fillings they actually do. All right, let's go. I can see that. It is such a, you know, people just default to Taco Bell. Oh, I feel like something, but not a burger. I'll go get that. It's different. But it's not as expensive as Chipotle. Well, there's a reason. <laughs> they're, they're skimping on it. But man, Chipotle is expensive. I had no idea. My lovely lady friend had to go to Walmart today. There was something she needed that she couldn't wait for it to appear via delivery. Plus Amazon, what they were offering was way more expensive for what she needed. So she just went straight to Walmart. Walmart is bringing third party ads to an aisle near you as retailers chase new money makers. Shoppers will see ads on screens in self-checkout lanes. I think I'm already seeing that in my local grocery store. They will hear commercials over the store's radio. That's nothing new. I'm sure I've heard commercials over. I'm definitely hearing them at my local grocery store, Safeway. And they will be able to sample items at demo stations at Walmart. That was typically more of a Costco thing. Costco things. Yes, it all comes back to Costco again. Ugh. You know what I didn't find at Costco the lot this t um, when I went on Friday? I couldn't find chocolate chips. I asked every, oh, you know, where are the chocolate chips? Nope, no chocolate chips. Interesting, huh? McDonald's, so they spent all this money. All the franchise owners, the people that own the local McDonald's near you, they spend a bunch of money to make sure that that restaurant is nice, the upkeep, and you go, Mike, I've been in their bathrooms. They're disgusting. Well, some are, depending on where you are in the country, I guess. I don't know, depending on who's running the thing. But McDonald's is opening a mysterious new spinoff restaurant named Cause MC, Cause Mick. Get it? MC as in McDonald's. Cosmic is a character from McDonald Land, a fictional universe home to characters like Ronald McDonald. The alien character Cosmic debuted in actually the late 80s. So those of you, at least those millennials out there will go, hey, maybe I remember that thing. The Cosmic. But yes, McDonald's is losing a bunch of money because people are not coming in and sitting down in the restaurants anymore. They get their food and they leave. So what are they going to do with that extra space? That is something that may your McDonald's may soon just have a bathroom but not really have a seating area. I, I, I can't think of and that, may, that makes total sense to me. I have I don't remember the last time I sat in a McDonald's. I remember sitting in one well, I remember all the times I've been and sat inside of a McDonald's. And, oh, speaking back to Costco, they, I don't see any of the seating areas anymore. For Well, wait a minute. They did take some of them out during COVID. But, yeah, some of them are back, but there's very few tables and seating areas. They want you to get out. So, the times that I've sat in a McDonald's, was like when I was a teenager and we had nowhere else to go. <laughs> like that line from uh, Richard Gere and Officer and a Gentleman. But yeah, they it, it, it was just uh, usually disgusting and a bunch of stupid people in those places. You know, the, the people were causing trouble, the teenagers that is, and we were probably part of the trouble that was being caused. 
But for the most part, I think people avoid it just for the, oh, I just had a flashback. One time, they used to have salt and pepper shakers at every table at a at the McDonald's is, that I knew of as a teenager. As a teenager once, a bunch of teenagers sitting around in a McDonald's. And as a joke, I went and sniffed some pepper. And oh my gosh, I was sneezing. I had sinus issues for the next several days. Not a smart move. Don't do that, teenagers out there. Just telling you. From someone who did it and lived to tell about it, I wish I had not done it. But yes, McDonald's eating areas are disappearing. It's a rare breed. You know what else is a rare breed? Is the wonderful people outside a cafe anyway. Let's say hi to them now. Hello, Mike Matthews. It's Shelly. It's too hard to get some supervisor. Wow, that was a really stupid thing for you to do, Mike Matthews. That's right. Sniffing pepper is never a smart thing. Ah, what is that? Mike Matthews, this is a snow globe that's made completely, instead of having um, little snowflakes inside, snowflakes, Mike Matthews. Yes, I've heard about snowflakes. There's all kinds of snowflakes today. They get offended very easily, I hear. Uh huh. No, these are like little, instead of snowflake flakes, Mike Matthews, and flaky things like that, Mike Matthews, it's got pepper inside of it, Mike Matthews. Oh my gosh. I'm having a flashback. No. Take that snow globe away from me. Okay, Mike Matthews. I'm going to take that snow globe away from you. I hope this is very fulfilling for you, Mike Matthews, my little visit. Everybody, if you want a snow globe, come to the gift shop at the wonderful cafe anyway. There she goes. Look who else is here. Oh, Mike, this is Floyd the floor man. And this is John Deere, the engineer. Mike, you shouldn't make fun of snowflakes. Sometimes what they say is true. People can be very offensive, and they should think about what they say. <clears throat> Will you shut up? Liberty Nation, freedom, foam for all. Telling us things that we need to know. And it is time now for us to enjoy going back in time. Let's, Let's go, go back, back with, with Matthews. Matthews. Mike's Daily Podcast Master Pod Eater. This is Mike. I think this is over 20 years ago. 20, 20 years old. And I worked at a radio station called K Hey. We did the K Hey Santa Fe Cafe. But one of the things I did, we would get all these calls because we were playing modern country at the time. So this is early 2000s. We were playing all the stuff that was popular then, the Shania Twain, Faith Hill, Rascal Flats, and all that. And people would call up and want to hear the classic stuff. So I was thinking, hey, this is an early morning show where we play classic country hits. Why don't we call it K. Hayes' Looking Back Breakfast? And that was because there's a Willie Nelson, Waylon Jennings song called Looking Back Texas, and they sound similar. I don't know if anybody ever got that, but yes. So I did this show, I think it was early Sunday mornings. And I'm going to play you a little bit of it and not play the music because otherwise I'll get dinged by YouTube. But first, I want to play you a little commercial that I did to try and get more interns to help. We had an internship program at k -Hey where people, we set up booths, booths, Booths. We'd send set up these little tents and tables and give away stuff at various events around, you know, happenings, festivals and whatnot around Ventura County. And there we needed interns to do it. It was a great way to get their foot in the door and radio and they could get school credit. So they needed me to do a commercial. And I wrote this commercial and I voiced all the voices in it. And it was pretty bizarre and interesting. And I would like you to hear it now. Here we go. Whoa, Captain Heyman. Since I met you, I've discovered the wonderful world of radio. That's right, my son. Radio sure is swell. But now, all my good friends want to know how they can get an internship program for school credit at KA2. Well, usually right here, I would tell you. But because I've already got a KA internship, you assume I know? That, and right now I have to hit Simon. In my opinion, and I have an opinion on this show... 
That was easy. Call the KA Promotions Department today to find out more at 805-642-8595. Captain Heyman, you don't like Simon because he insulted your singing? No, because he's rich. KHAY's Looking Back Breakfast. There you go. Captain Heyman. It's like a superhero. And doesn't like Simon because he's rich. Yeah. And Simon probably still is rich. Ronnie Milsap. Death with a special exhibit. Music that is. I think that's Ronnie Milsap. Ronnie Millsap was huge in the 80s. I don't know if any of you really know who he is. He was a country artist. Notably about Ronnie, other than, of course, his amazing voice that he had. And he co-wrote, I think he co-wrote some of his stuff. He had a lot of big hit songs. Some of them crossed over from the country charts to the pop charts. He was also blind. But he is still around. He's still with us. And I think that's what I was playing here. Oh yeah, that is him. Professing his love for great 50s music, that is Ronnie Millsap lost in the 50s tonight in the still of the night. Kicking off the k Looking Back Breakfast with Matt Michaels. The Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum is marking the 40th anniversary of singer Patsy Cline's death with a special exhibit. Klein, Cowboy Copas, Hawkshaw Hawkins, and Randy Hughes were traveling from Kansas City to Nashville March 5th, 1963, when their plane crashed in the hills near Camden, Tennessee in a thunderstorm. The Camden Crash Archive Spotlight features an artifact representing each of the victims. Klein's cigarette lighter, Hawkins' white leather guitar strap, and the clock from the Piper Comanche Hughes piloted were all recovered at the crash site. Copus' white felt western hat, which was custom made by the Fox Hat Company of St. Paul, Minnesota, is also on display. Archive spotlights are informal exhibits that highlight specific themes or aspects of the museum's core exhibit. The Camden Crash Spotlight will run through March, rather June 9th, in order to keep fans in town for the annual fanfare celebration and giving them an opportunity to see it. Pat Klein with Crazy Now on the K-Hey Looking Back Breakfast. Crazy. Ah, what a voice. Willie Nelson wrote that. Okay, there you go. That's a little bit of a thing I did for quite a while called the K-Hey Looking Back Breakfast. And then we go back in time a little bit more in this Let's Go Back with Matthews to a classic rock station that I was on where we were playing... It, it was classic rock, but it was it wasn't really called classic rock at that point because this is 1992, so 30 years ago, and I sounded quite a bit different than I do now. The morning at 8:20, he chooses a name from all the birthday entries and awards them a very special birthday gift. Hey, write that off your list. Oh, I do sound the same, but I don't know. <laughs> it was 20 something then, and I did, did one of my first radio jobs. So. Uh, let's just say I still needed a little bit of work. Okay, listen for birthday of the day only here on the bus 96.7. We've got uh, Robert Palmer and Rod Stewart right after the happy holiday. Never try. The bus 96.7. Look out for that black water there. It's not good for you. Stay away from it. I'm not a DJ, but I play one on radio. The Bus 96.7, Mike Matthews here. Monday through Friday at noon. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Wait, we warehouse top 10 countdown. Stephanie Rose comes in here, plays back songs made popular years and years ago. Oh, uh, hey, that was a Paul McCartney song. Yeah, so we played some cool music like that. And then we go a little bit earlier to 1989. And I've played some of this before. I don't you know. You know, some music from Down Under, which is down there in Australia. Yeah, and I want to tell you, it's Girl Scout cookie time. Watch for special Girl Scout cookie booths outside supermarkets in the downtown area or wherever shoppers just happen to be. Proceeds support the many Girl Scout programs throughout the Tri-Counties. And you can order your Girl Scout cookies by phone. Get this. You can order it by phone. Don't have to go to the market. Just by phone. You can do that by calling 564-4848. That number again for Girl Scout cookies. 
564-4848. That's in the public interest for 197. If you have not yet prepared your will, uh, please listen to Girl Scout cookies. Without a will, the law- I'm Mike Matthews writing the Nocturnal Express with a 60-minute power play with uh, on KHGY Santa Barbara with Bobby Brown. That's what I mean. Oh, it's Roman. Oh, uh, this is 1989. I think I'm like KHGY 187. Hello, I'm Mike Matthews, the 187 substitute DJ. Yeah, and we've been talking with Liz and Susie, the. Uh, the party twins, right. And uh, I'm talking to him now. She's my best friend, not my sister. Oh, she's not your sister? No. What, you were lying to me? What? She's not your twin? Oh, I, I feel I feel used, abused. What the heck? You're used and abused. Yeah, we're all a little bit abused and used. But here's the boy style of my heart. What? What is that song? KHGY 197, that was the latest from Boy Meets Girl, Bring Down the Moon. Hello, I'm Mike Matthews, the 197 substitute DJ, riding on the Nocturnal Express. Hear that whistling? Yeah, we're working on a 60-minute power play, and we got lots of stuff coming up this hour, including Paul Simon, Michael Jackson, Rick Astley, Mike and the Mechanics, and right now, Eric Carmen, Hungry Eyes from Dirty Dancing on 197. That song was... Well, that movie was huge at that time. Well, there you go. Thanks for coming back in to the uh, present time. As we went back to the past to hear these interesting radio days that yours truly did. Oh, wow. And that was an overnight shift, by the way, that last thing we heard. So I don't even know how I was awake. And then overnight shifts, if you've ever done one at any particular job, the rest of the day you're trying to play catch up and then if that's five days straight of that oh you can't even catch up on the weekend it's tough so i hope you can get some sleep i hope you have a wonderful week i hope your boss doesn't annoy you and tell you things that hey wait a minute i think you got your facts wrong guy uh maybe maybe you should double check what you're telling me because that's always annoying so hopefully your boss checks themselves before they wrecks themselves and that you have a great week and if you are a boss make sure to check your facts too so you're not telling your employees weird things that they don't need to know about hey that's a great piece of advice to end the show on and with more ways to reach me and to give me your cool piece of advice oh and hopefully lionel richie's okay apparently he canceled a a uh, severe weather. Oh, he that's what happened. Lionel Richie and Earth, Wind & Fire canceled their sold-out Madison Square show yesterday. And he said that he was unable to fly into New York because of poor weather conditions. Okay, thank you. I didn't play any Lionel Richie in that clip from the 80s, but yes, he was certainly popular at that time. But who's popular now? Ed Sheeran. He's had a brief career change. He was swapping recordings for retail. Yes, he was working in retail as he worked a shift at Lego store. There was a Lego store the 32-year-old was working at um, at the Mall of America. This was yesterday surprising fans by signing Lego boxes and handing out gifts, meeting hundreds of unsuspected fans, and also singing. That's interesting too, huh? All right, thought I'd end it with something interesting and with more ways to reach me where you can give me your interesting stuff. Here's A-Frame. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.